that volume. Yes. So, so Mr. Now I have we're going to on the record in the matter of Kevin Salazar, two 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 five eight five. And <clears throat> appearance counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke appearing behalf of my client. It's time we sent the matter being heard via Zoom. And Mr. Salazar, your name, please. Kevin Salazar. All right. And so Mr. Salazar is on probation to this court for operating while visibly impaired by alcohol. And um, Mr. Salazar was sentenced on February 14th. And this is alleging that on uh, February 28th, March 1st, and March 21st, he failed to appear for drug testing. And on March 10th, he tested positive for marijuana. And counsel, is there an opportunity to speak to Mr. Salazar? Yes, Your Honor. He understands yes. that he can have a hearing in which he could contest these violations. That will be necessary. Okay, Mr. Salazar, please raise your right hand. You saw me, sir, from the testimony about to give this man to be the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay, all right. And as to the allegation of the three uh, drug tests you failed to appear for, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Um, not guilty. Not guilty? Um, well, I was in the hospital for part of the time. Okay. So, counsel, do you want a few minutes to talk to Mr. Salazar? No, I mean, at this point, we're going to provide an explanation. It's a black and white violation. He did not appear for testing. Uh, he indicates that he was in the hospital. He can provide proof to probation, but that doesn't sidestep the fact that he didn't go to his testing. Okay, I would agree. And so, Mr. Salazar, as to those allegations, how are you pleading? Um, I just not guilty. Or to an explanation. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoever is there with you cannot speak because I am recording this and I do not have that person identified for the record. So I need that person okay. to not say anything on the record, please. And okay, I guess so. Are, are you pleading guilty or not guilty, sir? Um, guilty with an explanation. Okay. As to the positive marijuana test on March 10th, how do you plead? Uh, guilty. Okay. With an explanation. Okay. And you had an opportunity to go over your advice or rights for probation violation purposes with your attorney, correct? Yes. And you understand all of those rights? Yes. And um, you understand that by entering into a plea that you will be waiving those rights to a hearing, waiving some of those rights, specifically your right to have a contested hearing. Uh, yes. Okay. And you also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea today, correct? Yes. Specifically, the recommendation is for you to continue to complete all of your terms of probation, pay a fifty dollars probation violation fee, thirty days on the alcohol tether, mandatory jail, <clears throat> and revocation of probation for future violations. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea. Yes. Yes. And <clears throat> has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. All right. And counsel, if you can please board to your client. Yes, I'd like to direct your attention to the following dates. February 28th, 2023, March 1st, 2023, and March 30, 21st, 2023. Did you fail to submit 
to a drug test is ordered by your probation. I uh, yes. And then furthermore, I'd like to direct your attention to March 10th, 2023. Did the test that you take indicate the use of marijuana? Yes. Satisfied, Your Honor. Okay, I think that, did you talk about the missed drug test on March 1st and March 21st also, or just February 28th? Uh, I, uh, I addressed all three dates. Okay, okay, just, I didn't name it that, okay. All right, <clears throat> and the court will indicate that the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea of guilty and indicate for each violation will be is found based upon that plea of guilty. And that the violations are technical violations number one, two, three, and four. And um, counsel asked for Mr. Salazar's explanation. Your Honor, he indicates that he was hospitalized uh, at least for some of the days that he had missed the drug test. And uh, furthermore, Judge, he did provide me with a copy of a medical marijuana card. I did send that to his probation officer. Um, I told him that that didn't necessarily grant him permission to smoke marijuana or to ingest it without permission of his probation as well as the court. As to the recommendations, I do believe they are appropriate. I would ask that they be adopted. Judge, unless there has been though, a, a test for positive for alcohol, I don't know if an alcohol tether is necessarily mandated. I don't know if that's really um, the problem that he's been having. I don't see that there's been any positive alcohol test, but we would uh, respectfully request consideration for any leniency this court could uh, accommodate. Thank you, Judge. Oh, thank you. Mr. Salazar, when were you in the hospital? Uh, I wasn't, well, I'm so... I'm sorry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, actually, I'm going to have you jump into the court because that... Um, that device is not great with audio right now. So can you come on into the courtroom, please? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Sumter, I'm going to just have him come into the courtroom because it, the audio is kind of wonky right now. So. Sounds like it is uh, retained by Martel. So he's going to zoom in at 11. Nate has the other three files to one. You can just come up to the podium there, sir. Thank you. Okay, and so Mr. Shemke, your client's in the courtroom now. Mr. Salazar, you can see your, your attorney up, up on the screen, correct? Yes. Okay, and so I'm sorry. So what days were you in the hospital? Uh, I'm not exactly sure my mom has the exact days. Okay, did She's you get right over there? Okay, so if you can go grab them from her, please. Okay, I'm going to go to the dates. No, oh, thank you. I want you to hand him the dates. Yep. I know Natalie. No, okay, but ma'am, I don't have you identified for the record. So if you can just please give him the dates. Thank you. Okay, and so what date, sir, were you yeah, in the hospital? I was in the hospital from March 23rd to April 4th for one of the dates, and then the other day, I'm not sure one, but Natalie has it. Okay, well, sir, April, March 23rd through April 4th would not be any of the dates that are alleged in this violation. Perhaps there was another date that you may have missed yes. that was, ma'am, yeah. stop, please. That, yeah. that, but that is not in this violation. Okay. That was not a violation because you provided your medical that your hospitalization. It doesn't appear as though she violated you. Ms. Schultz, please stop unmuting. I'm keeping you muted for a reason. We're not, we're on the record on another matter. So on any of the dates that you failed to appear for drug testing on February 28th, March 1st, or March 21st, were you in the hospital? Um, yes. What date? Uh, I'm not exactly sure because Natalie has the dates for those because I just don't have the dates for the first time I was in the hospital, I was in the hospital two times. Okay. 
So what I'm going to presume, sir, is because these are listed on here as violations that the date that you are that you provided the hospitalization documentation to Ms. Shaw, that there was another date that you missed and that's not included on here. Probably. Okay. Because if there's documentation provided, it's not a violation. Okay. Okay. So you have a medical marijuana card? I do. When did you obtain that medical marijuana card? Um, I think I got it in like March or February or something. After you were after you already started appearing in court here, correct? Yeah, but I already had no medical marijuana card and okay. but I just didn't renew it. Right. So because you didn't renew it, then what I'm trying to going what I'm going to tell you is that you cannot use marijuana for medicinal purposes unless you have a letter from your treating physician. Okay. So did your treating physician give you the medical marijuana card? No, it wasn't my treating physician. It was a medical marijuana doctor. Okay. So that's not that is not sufficient for this court. Okay. You need to get it from your medical from your treating physician. Okay. There needs to be some sort of medical treatment relationship for that medical marijuana card to be valid in this court. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you were to test today, sir, what would be detected in your system? Just marijuana. When's the last time you used marijuana? Uh, a few days ago, probably a week ago. Sir, I'm pretty sure that your probation officer told you since you don't have a valid medical marijuana card with this court, you're not allowed to use marijuana. That's true, Your Honor. But yet you're still using marijuana. I, I just have headaches that I use it for sometimes, so I had to use it, but I didn't really have to use it. You know, I could just use it sometimes, but, or it's not at all, really. But it's going to be not at all. Until you have a letter from your treating physician, it's not at all. Okay. You can't use it at all. So you have to use some other medication uh, that you're prescribed or over the counter uh, for your headaches. Okay. That's how that goes. When's the last time you consumed any alcohol, sir? Uh, months ago, Your Honor. So why didn't you appear for your drug test on February 28th? Um, I might have been in the hospital at the time. I'm not really sure. No, sir. If you were in the hospital, you wouldn't be here for a violation. On the 28th? Of February, yes. Just two weeks after you were sentenced. Um... I think I went there, but I, I might have had to pee and I couldn't pee or something because of the medication they had me on or something like that. What about for March 1st? Why didn't you go that day? Uh, March 1st, I was actually, I think I might have lost my key or something like that. And I, I was trying to find my key and I had to get a ride and I was just late. Okay, so here's what I show from, <clears throat> this shows on February 28th, you had failed to register. So you, that was on a day that you couldn't go register, you couldn't go, your, you couldn't urinate. You're supposed to register on the 16th, but you didn't. So then you were supposed to register on the February 28th, and you didn't. So that's why that violation's there. Then on March 1st, Oh, could not urinate on that day. And then you didn't appear at all on March 21st. Uh, March 21st, I was in the hospital on the 23rd. So I was having some issues that day, I think, like with the hospital or something along those lines. Okay. <clears throat> I would agree that since there isn't a violation for alcohol right now, even though his conviction is for an alcohol related offense, um, I don't know that the tether is the most appropriate. What the court's going to indicate is that I'm going to indicate five days jail. I'm going to suspend that jail. We're going to do a jail review. Any violations, sir, you'll have those five days to serve and any additional amount. Okay. We'll do a jail review in just 45 days. So we'll do a jail review 
May 22nd. at 10 a.m. All right, any future violation, there will be a mandatory jail as well as revocation of probation. All right? Okay, thank you. So probation will continue to complete all terms of probation with the probation violation fee. And then um, your email or your step over probation before you leave, okay? Okay. Sir, when's the next time, uh, when's the last time you tested? Uh, I think a few days ago. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.